All righties, here we go. So I'm just, you, I've just started with the Payne's Grey. This is just one layer of paint that's been popped down, just really, really roughly, okay, just to give some kind of indication of where the movement's going to be happening. And I'm just developing on that. When I'm doing my open water scenes like this, it's really important when you're going horizontal on the canvas, it makes it really heaps easier if you make sure the brush is really wet. You don't want the paint on too thick, but it just needs to be um, yeah, quite wet so it just glides across the canvas and doesn't grip. And if you start feeling it grip or leave this little liney or just, you know, kind of holy scratchy effect, then it just means that you don't have enough paint or water on your brush. Okay, now I've just got a painter's brush now. And I just go horizontal first and then a little bit at an angle both ways. It just helps get rid of um, the liney effects. Just blends it out just that little bit more, just to make it a bit more soft. It's really important when you're doing scenes like this that when you do like obviously I'm not doing waves okay but I'm doing I'm trying to create that feeling of you're looking into swell okay and when you're doing that it's really important that the tops of the swell isn't straight but you don't want it too hilly looking either so you kind of want a little bit of shape to it just creating that feeling of movement in it And it's just really fine strokes. I'll try and do them slowly for you. Okay, left, right, left, right. Okay, when you load your brush, which I'm doing now, okay, obviously you're going to have more paint on it. So things come out, the colours come out a little bit more vivid. Um, I tend to paint a fair bit before I reload. I like that look of, you know, the colour comes out quite, as in it's quite stark, it's blocked in a little bit more, it's darker when you've just reloaded, okay, like that. Now, obviously, as the paint lessens on the brush, it starts fading out the colour. And I actually like that appearance because it kind of gives it that little washed out look. And it does actually start acting like a natural mid-tone to the original colour. At the moment, sorry, I should have explained, I'm just using the um, Payne's Grey by itself. I'm not actually using the mid-tone of it at the moment. And again, instead of reloading, another trick is just to dab the brush in a little bit of water again. So you just get that little bit of colour on the brush. But it's not too dark. And because I'm moving back here in the really distant ocean now, we just want really fine, fine, 
fine reflections. And when you're standing on a beach looking out at the horizon, the horizon line, especially here in Tassie, it's never that um, stark line. You, you know, you don't get that you know end of an ocean and the beginning of sky feeling. It's, it tends to be more hazy and soft looking. And the most distant part of the ocean is actually a little bit lighter in tone than the middle and the closer part of the ocean, okay? So the distant part of this ocean, even though I'm putting in the darker areas to represent, you know, a few troughs, when I go back to highlighter, I want to use like the light colors from the sky in that distant part of the ocean. As for the middle and the, the full water, it won't be as light, it will be more dark. Okay, so I'm working with the mid-tone of the ultramarine blue and white now. So obviously the tips of these little, or little, the swell areas down here are going to have the sky colours in them. And again, I just use the painter's brush. Um, the direction of the movement I've got happening, okay, so the swell's there, I've got the water coming up that way into the wave, okay. So with a painter's brush, I tend to just actually blend it in that same direction. Again, it's just really fine little brush strokes and movements. Just making sure the brush is quite wet. Another trick, okay, because I did the dark first, which I tend to work with dark and then work with the light, okay. I've used the Payne's Grey here, okay, to indicate some swell and movement. So on top of those dark areas is where I want a little bit of light reflecting off it. So you want, there's a time and place, and sometimes it's a bit hard to work out when, but there's a time and place of working in like your three tone rule where you, you know you go from dark to light but there's also a time and place for having really contrasting colors together so I want that deep Payne's gray look and then a lighter color on top to indicate that the sun's bouncing on top of that little ripple or swell area Same as up here, so on top of that Payne's grey area, just really accentuating a highlighted highlight area. Just got to be careful when you do this. When you're adding the highlight on the top, you don't want to have, see here, this area here, you can see how that highlight I've done just looks like this just vivid straight line. You don't want that either, okay? So you need to kind of blend the back of that 
line in a little bit. Now, because I'm getting closer to the horizon, it is a little bit lighter, so I'm going to actually start working in the mid-tone of the Payne's Grey. It's a little bit lighter than the mid-tone, actually, sorry. Now I'm just picking up some of the light, light colour of the ultramarine blue and white, just to add a few little fine trails of that here in the distant water. And again, in the distant, okay, you just want really fine. Some you can have long lines or long reflections going, you know, all the way across the whole canvas. But every now and then you just want some little, little shorter ones. And you certainly don't want them in any pattern. I always say you need, you need a disorganized pattern, okay, because you don't want it to look the same. And here's where, because we're getting closer, okay, we're actually going to start seeing a little bit more movement. In the distant, okay, in the ocean, the movement's going to be more horizontal, okay, in line with the horizon. As you're coming closer down these swell areas, you are actually going to start seeing movement in different directions. And we need to start representing that here. So again, it's just really fine little brush strokes. Not in any particular pattern or order, but you do need to um, kind of map out the perspective you want with the movement of the ocean. Now this is the area of the painting, or the stage of the painting that I can get quite carried away with. I can actually seriously just sit here for hours on end doing this. I love actually adding the foam and the, just getting the movement into the waves. It's amazing actually. I love these types of scenes too because 
when you have when you're just doing open water like this okay even though yes there is you know there's such a thing called physics and you have to you know kind of consider the movement of the water and get the right direction happening but at the same time you know if you're out on a boat in the really deep ocean which we're pretending this is the swell can like just come from different angles so you don't necessarily, like every single wave I'm doing here, I'm not doing the same direction and having the same movement and flow happening in each swell area. For me, that looks, it just makes it look too staged. To me, to get it more realistic, you want, you know, this swell here to have movement coming up into it that way. You want this swell here having movement up into it that way. Some, the movement's going to be, you know, head on into it. So it's just getting a little bit of variety happening that I think makes it that just that little bit more realistic as well. It's always good to know too, with acrylic, okay, I blocked in the base layer of this yesterday, okay, so before I started working on today, it was really, it was very well dried, okay, so today when I'm coming back doing this, if there's anything that you're not happy with, let's say if I didn't like that section there, you can just get a clean brush, okay, just wet it, and if you're actually just really gently then just literally pull that paint off. What you've just done then will come off beautifully without damaging the underneath layer. So if you're beginning to paint and learning to paint seascapes, never be scared or afraid that you're going to ruin anything, especially, especially if you've got a base that you're really happy with. It's quite easy to kind of have, I had that fear for a long time when I started painting seascapes. Oh God, I'm gonna ruin it. Um, but really, there's no such thing as ruining any painting, I don't think. It's just about going back and pushing paint around a little bit differently further, adding colours, taking them away until you get what you're happy with. And again, as I just said, if worse comes to worse, then you can actually just remove that whole layer and start again. So you never have to be worried about ruining anything. Okay, so we're getting really close to this foreground here, so I want some really accentuated highlights here. With some little kind of ripples and reflections and foam trails coming off. Okay, now I'm just picking up some of the mid-tone of the grey. I just want to come back up here. That's not very much of a mid-tone. That was a bit too light. So with acrylics, okay, it's obviously just a build-up of colour over a few layers. Um, it's important to remember that acrylics do actually dry 
a couple of tones darker than what you're actually seeing in your palette with what you're applying. Having said that, to get the colour that you actually want when you're working in layers, it does take a few layers to build up. Now I'm actually about to just stop for a little bit. Just want to break up this colour here a tad. Just to give it a little bit of a lift up here. Okay, so I've just popped that on. That was actually with a dry brush. I just blobbed that paint on, but now I'm actually wetting the brush. And I, just to blend and soften the edges of that a little bit. You don't want too much water on the brush for this, but you just need enough that the paint Spreads around a bit more. And there we go. I'm going to leave it at that actually. 